Hey everybody, it's Kate at Kate's Garden Chicken and Cat Rambles, and here we are, it's Thursday. Today we actually got up to, I think, 51, and, oh no, you're not sneaking out, Missy, 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 Missy. The reason I didn't make the gate super wide, but they are probably still walking around on a good six, seven inches of straw and pine shavings. Hey! What are you attacking me for, mister? Check and see if we got an egg from Luna. She's the only one that's been laying. So look at this check. Stretch. Oh, yep. There we go. You don't get to eat your egg. Sorry. I've been looking underneath to make sure that nobody's laying back here and I can't see, but that doesn't seem like there is. Uh, this brown one here still has a laid neck. This is going on three weeks, so she's obviously taking a winter hiatus because she picked her up, I checked her vent, felt her abdomen. She's fat and sassy, not egg bound, not having any issues. So she wants to go in and be a little curious. And she is. Anyway, guards at haphazard, this is what keeps the new wind from coming in around their door. I opened up, rolled the tarp up partway so they got more light today. And, of course, they continue to kick straw in their food. What do you guys got to kick straw in your food for? I'd rather pick the straw out than dump it out because it has their... Um, natural warmer in it <laughs> which um this comes from the poultry store i am not sponsored by anybody too small of a channel for that i just uh like this blend they've had liquid warmer and they've also been treated um, um pacotosis, but they are that goes in about every few days but anyway was able to move one stump. These other two are the one I'm sitting on and that one are still frozen to the ground because we had all that rain and wet right before it got so super cold. So we've been out here a couple times today giving treats and just hanging out and that was that and that was once a full bale of straw but they were frozen so I broke off part of it and then yesterday last night I threw the other half in there. Or yesterday. I'd mentioned it in a Facebook post, but little birds never come and land in the corral, especially when I'm out here. But I observe a lot from the window, and it's hilarious. Out of the corner of my eye, out the window, I saw um, several of my chickens running really fast, but they weren't doing the I'm scared run where they're their heads up and they're, uh, you know, oh no, it was an aggressive run. And what they were doing is Miss Bronwyn. Miss Luna, and I'm not sure which one of the Brahmas. It might have been Kiva. There's Kiva. This is Neve. Uh, we're chasing off the little birds. And then one of the Brahmas was standing up on that uh, straw. And it was um, earlier in the morning when the little birds would like fly low over. They'd make a little shadow. And she was like spinning in circles, like, which way? Where are those little birds? Shoo, shoo. Get out of our yard. Don't eat our leftover scratch. We didn't eat it, but we don't want you to eat it. And right now, there's this obsession with pecking the back of my sweater. Mm -hmm. And my sock. What are y'all pecking it mama for? It's like, because it's Thursday afternoon and you're still in your PJs. Yeah, well, they're warm and cozy. I'm not going anywhere, so why do I need to put on public clothes? You're not the public. I'm a chicken. What? Between you guys and the cats, everyone loves this blue sweater. Oh, speaking of cat. Hey, Chaos, what are you doing? You ready to go in in a minute? I think Chaos is getting a little hard of hearing. I think his vision's okay. Oh, Rowan, yeah, you're such a... You're such a tough girl. Hey, 
that's my hand, mister. I don't have anything in my hand, so stop pecking at me. But Chaos wanted to come out today. He's come out each day this week for a little while. Today's the longest. And then in the evenings, I've been making him stay in because we have still been getting well below uh, freezing. I think last night, 21 or 22. And when I moved, I finally got this uh, stump loose. You can't see where it was because they've scratched straw over it, but it uh, finally came loose from the ground and it still had ice on the other underneath side a little bit. And I rolled that log over. It still had ice. Hey, stop pecking at my hands, mister. I don't have anything. It still had ice on it, so. Oh, they've knocked that over again. But yeah, they're, uh, they're digging some holes. Looks got a nice big hole there over there by that pallet. About one here. So the ground right there is not quite frozen. Do you want to peck the camera? Yeah. Yeah, I hear ya. The Brahmas have this really like, it's almost like a little high pitched whine. It's kind of cute, but luckily, <laughs> knock on wood, nobody has tried to fly the coop or fly the corral. And if you're new here, I'm sure sometimes it gets confusing. Sometimes I call the whole run the coop, which essentially it is. It's just the, the end back there. Uh, the five, a five foot square is able to be totally enclosed. It keeps the wind off of them and it's, it's their coop at night. And then when it's warm, like when we get back down to where it's only like 60s in the evening, um, on those evenings, I don't even close their little coop door. Um, I just, I close the wall, but I leave it open so if they want to come out and snack or, and it also gives them free range to roam around inside the run, their Dunkin' Donuts run. I am not sponsored by, um, until it gets dark. And I leave the gate to the run open. It, once, if you're new, um, for our run, we used a, uh, a five foot by 15 foot dog kennel. It could have been configured as a 10 by 10, but I did the 5 by 15 so that I could enclose one end easier, which it does isn't totally enclosed in wood. And then I hung an extra tarp around the outside to keep any kind of drafts. And then they've got the other, you know, 5 foot by 10 foot square area to run around and roam and, and have space to be in when they're enclosed in there, which I never enclose them in there except for when we were having the bitter, bitter uh, wind and freeze. Um, I opened their little door and so they could come out into the run as much as they wanted and I put really deep straw and uh, pine flakes in there but uh, they could always get up into the coop if they felt too cold or or too uh, uh, too much wind and in their coop they have what's called a happy chicken um, it's almost the same as a, a sweeter heater and it's a heater that uh, it only radiates heat. It doesn't really warm up the coop, but if one of them feels like they wanna sit in front of it, they can. And it keeps probably a little bit of bite out of the air. Um, one night I went out and the thermometer in there said it was 19 and it was 19 out here too, but um, there's no, of course, no wind in there. And um, every now and then you'll see one sitting in front of it and it's got some little peck marks and they knocked it down and cracked it, the framing of it, but it still works. And, um, I'll turn it on at night and uh, <laughs> of all the chickens who like to sit in front of it every now and then it's the Brahmas and they're the ones that have the thickest down and the most feathers but so coming out to see if we can catch any chicken antiques is tough when I'm out here because as you can see they all want to hang out around me within about five feet of me and scratch and kick dirt on me and hi laddie Yeah, they're, they're doing good and they're glad it's warmed up. It's probably almost three o'clock in the afternoon, so there's no sun left in their corral. The corral stays in the sun um, in, until about noon or one. And then by that time, that's the east. So by that time, the you know, the sun has moved over and this uh, uh, great big spruce tree keeps it shaded and then late in the afternoon you'll get western sun and that's the west we're looking up there so tonight I think we're supposed to only get down in the 40s so I may go ahead and just leave the blue tarp up 
you know, unless we're going to get below freezing or really windy, um, that side of the coop faces the north. And right now we're not supposed to be getting any kind of winds out of the north. Um, Saturday when we get some rain, maybe coming out of the uh, north by northeast, which is behind me, directly behind where the, you know, where I'm sitting. But anyhow, just a little update. Going to the new year. I mean, you know, keeping a close eye on them and spending time, even when it's bitter cold, coming out and spending time and without overstressing them and picking them up because uh, picking Bronos up has made her a little more skittish, but um, they get really super close and hang out really close to me. So I'm able to, every now and then, uh, the hands just push down on their back and they'll kind of sit and I lift up their tails and I check their vents and check their feathers and check them for parasites and make sure there's no issues and try to watch I mean it sounds gross to people but I try to stay out here long enough and observe all uh, five of these survivors um, watch them all poop at least once during the day just so you know and I I do a poop inspection they poop all over their little uh, their little boardwalk uh, parade spot where they like to parade up and down on that and you know of course I check the poops inside and every morning I I take a good look at you know any of the poops that are in the in the coop because you you know if, <laughs> we hear ya he really wants to try to mount the Brahmas <laughs> they're so tall he has such a hard time but uh he rarely crows during the middle of the day but who, who knows what he's thinking but back to the point, you know, when you have any kind of pet, whether it's chickens, the cats, the dogs, you can tell a lot about their health by their droppings. Yeah. Pooh is a great educator, especially when it comes to barnyard animals too, because, you know, just like humans, if there's something going on internally, it's gonna show itself one way or the other. I have no idea why he's crowing so much all of a sudden. They're on the other side of their pavilion, which I haven't put the other three, two walls up on it just because it's been too cold to paint and uh, we just had so much crazy weather. So as this is getting a little weathered, I'll probably pop that side off the spring and put three new sides on it and paint it. We hear you, mister. He's up there by one of the fake crows. Crow as in corvid bird. Uh, hawks do not like crows. Crows will attack hawks and often can even kill a hawk, especially if you get two of them gang up on one. So I haven't really noticed any sort of aerial predators around the yard. I do have my uh, black vultures that hang out on the roof and I see them on occasion, but. What's up, Laddie Roo? Yeah, what are you telling everybody? <coughs> and as the girls, they're all kind of gathered up around where he is. So I'll have to look up and see if crows often will gather in the flock or if it's just a, just a rooster being a rooster. <coughs> You're so handsome. I love that he crows, especially since I'm surrounded by people who are in town limits and I'm not in town limits. So in town, Milton, you cannot have backyard chickens, period, but I'm not in town. So what are you finding up there? There's nothing to eat. Little Mr. Silly Crooked Beak. Yeah, look how fluffy you is. He's like, don't you touch me, woman. I saw that. Are you going to alert? Huh? So I have two Brahmas, two Buff Brahmas, uh, East uh, Americana Cross in the middle. She's part, she's Americana and Easter Egger mix. And then my surviving Silver Lace Wine Dot Luna. So we've got Luna, Una, uh, Bronwyn is there in the middle. Una is the Silver Lace Wine Dot who died. This is Laddie Roo. His name started out as Bonnie Lass because we thought he was a girl and just going to be the bossy head hen and well gender reveal turned out to be a boy that's Cuba she's the more red-headed of the buff Brahmas and there's Neve 
What? What are you telling me? Talk to me, girl. And boy. Hi. What's up? You know I have your egg in my pocket, don't you? You can't have it. Came out earlier, and of course her uh, her comb and waddles were not as dark, and I was like, eh. get a little moment of panic after her sister passed. But she had just been inside the uh, indoor uh, dust bathing area, the big box, and she had been dust bathing. And that's why her, her comb and waddles looked paler because they're covering dust. And then she jumped down off of one of these stumps and shook her feathers and it was like pig pain from Peanuts cartoon. She uh, put out a little ball of dust around her. So they're pecking at this partially frozen pail of straw. What are you guys doing? We got a kick up. When I came out here, none of this was kicked up. You couldn't see the ground. Now they're all standing at my feet, foraging and kicking in their thing. What's up, Kiva? Huh? Are you on alert? I love researching into their breeds and, and the different shapes of their bodies. and Because you get the the definite V body of the Americana. Laddie Roo has that same shape. And then you get a broader, flatter back of the um, Brahmas. And Kyra mixed in between is Miss Luna, the Silver Lace Wine Dot. But she has her head up and her tail up. She kind of has a V shape too, but not as not as sharply as the Americana Easter Egg cross. So like, we don't want you to hold this, but we want you to stay right here and we're gonna scratch around you. Huh? Yeah, yeah, mom scratch too, so that you probably have clock. Oh yeah, we can all do this. Mom can do it too. I know these are the my my house crocs, not my coop crocs. My coop crocs. What? Don't peck at them. I like wearing the crocs for when they're comfortable. Um, my plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendon issue doesn't flare up, and I can wear really thick socks with them. So my, if you can stay toasty in the house, you know, of course I kick them off. I do have some uh, padded kind of uh, woven thick house boots, but uh, I had them on the other day in a video, but I don't want them, they're cloth and I don't want them dirty. And I, they, sometimes I get too hot in them. What are you two girls doing up there? What do you think you're doing, huh? Are you guys on alert? Cause there's chaos. He's sitting on one of their little borders out there. So that's probably why they're on alert. You guys loved him. You all had crushes on him. Strange interspecies crushes. Neve, I know, you you two had a special relationship. Ever since she was young, about eight weeks old, first came outside, she just considered him her boyfriend and he will, um, if you check out any of my past videos, when you if you're new, You'll see him sleeping right up against the uh, the uh, their old uh, uh, beginner run, which was just made off chicken wire and and wood and T post, and they uh, he would lay right up against the uh, the chicken wire, and they would sit right up against it, right next to him, and chat and flirt. Especially this one here, especially this little fluffy, pretty butt. But yeah. Uh, the Brahmas are not laying yet. They hit seven, they just, uh, well, Monday, they were starting their eighth month. And I think the only reason they're not laying is because they've come in at their prime maturity, which is about seven months old, six to seven months old during the winter. And um, they both had a little bit of molting, but really not much, not enough to call it a real molt. So, um, and that was in October. So I'm hoping that the spring they'll start laying. Um, Brahmas, like I've said before, are really good winter layers, but I think they've come into maturity, you know, right at the prime time right here when it was really cold. So we'll see how they progress. Right now they're just freeloaders. But, uh, I mean, they might not even reach full 
size maturity and weight maturity for a full two years. And um, they're pretty big now. They're, they're, they're a handful to pick them up. I don't know if you can really tell, but yeah, it's not really a good way to tell by just looking at my hand, but they're as big, if not bigger than the rooster. All right, well, I'm gonna go in. It's a 20 minute video of just chicken, doing chicken stuff and me babbling. But they like to stand on the pavilion. They still like to get inside and scratch. And um, I kind of use a deep litter method in there, which they don't really poop in there a lot. I mean, of course they poop, chickens poop anywhere they go, but also a scratch in there when it's like, if they're outside and it's kind of rainy, but. They're so cute. I love their little cute little fluffy butts. Hey, be nice. So this uh, Americana cross, brown one, is the head hen. Laddie, stop tacking my shoe. So she can be a little bossy. She's got a little mouth on her too, but she, uh, I thought it was gonna be Una, the other silver laced wine dot who passed away a few weeks ago, who had a heart attack. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, Cause Luna's pretty laid back. Luna's a rebel, but she doesn't boss the others around. Not like me, the brown one up here. The car and Laddie rear the two Americanas are the uh, ruling the roost. Let's see what these girls are doing. What you girls are doing, huh? We got a yawn. I know you don't have. You guys watching for little birds? Alright girls, I'm going back in. Can y'all say bye? Luna, can you say bye? Say see you later. See you later, YouTube. Please like and comment, share our videos.